everybody. Um, today I want to talk about the cycle of the archetypes. Um, it's kind of been a big thing for me, getting this all together and like wrapping my mind around what the cycle of the archetypes really mean to me. And um, I think that's what I'm going to try and do is stick to what it means to me, how I understand it, and not necessarily try to take information already given and make it accessible for others. I kind of feel like other people have done that beautifully and make the common interpretation really accessible and really understandable and relatable. Um, so I'll definitely, I'll most likely be putting like a link or two, maybe like up here, <laughs> somewhere for uh, people to find other interpretations. So I'm going to be talking about the revolution of cardinal, between cardinal, fixed, and uh, mutable. And I'm also going to be talking about the exaltation of certain elements. I'm going to be doing a separate video explaining my exaltation of the elements, and I'll probably be putting those up before this video itself. I'll make that more understandable when I talk about signs being exalted. So let's get started. <laughs> With qualities, um, we all know them as the quality of a sign. A sign can either be cardinal, it can be fixed, or it can be mutable. The way I see it, I totally forget the name of the bug, but there's like this bug I saw on TV once, I think on like Animal Planet's top 10, like they used to have like this top 10 show of like all the craziest animals in the world or some shit like that. And there's this bug, I think it was like the fastest bug in the world or like the fastest thing on earth. The bug would move so fast that its eyes could not keep up and it literally had to stop to look around and then start moving again to, to know what direction it was moving and to know where it was going. I kind of feel like that whole idea of that insect having to do that represents the qualities of signs. It goes cardinal, fixed, mutable, cardinal, fixed, mutable. I feel like cardinal is the movement. It's that it's that you're running, you've you've uh, you've can move and now you have to go in a certain direction. You start to move so fast that you can't see and you have to stop. That's fixed. You've stopped, but your mind was already made up from when you were moving, so your mind has not changed. You actually have to look around to change your mind and that's mutable you have to look around and understand where you are and understand what's going on around you before you start moving again your mind has to be changed but when you stopped you were sure you were going on the in the direction you were sure you were going so your mind is made up once you've stopped but until you take the time to look around your mind hasn't changed so i just always think about that bug when i think of the evolution of of fixed or from the evolution from cardinal to uh to mutable to cardinal again um i feel like that plays a big role in the cycle of the archetypes with the signs it starts with cardinal cardinal is that movement it's it's cardinal fire i kind of feel like this revolution goes over and over and over again and it's just the fact that it there's a cardinal fire is the beginning of something i feel like that's why it's the beginning Aries is the start. Aries is is represents the beginning of something. That that whole thing of movement it represents the core of what cardinal is in action. It's like if you literally lit a fire over a stack of papers, it's that engulfing. The flames engulf whatever it is that you just lit, and that's all it cares about. But the whole ignition. A fire that engulf that idea of something engulfed by flames is Aries that's the archetype really it's source that is the source of being that is that is the beginning of, of something that is the beginning of everything that explosion that spark that initial something when Aries grows up when Aries moves to a place where it can't move any farther when it grows to a place that has created something beyond itself that's Libra but we'll get to that with Taurus Taurus is the archetype of really things coming together 
things coming together to make sense. It's the first fixed earth. It's the first earth sign. It's, I don't think necessarily it represents anything physical. I feel like it's things come becoming physical. It's, it's the idea of, I feel like honestly, it's the idea of molecules forming together. It's, it's deciding what's mine and what's not, what's this and what's that, putting things together and, and, and creating a mass of something. I feel like Earth, what we think of as Earth, is something different. I feel like what we think of as a mass, a planet, an asteroid, um, a donut, a, a this, a that, anything that needs to be with molecules put together to make it something. I feel like that's the representation of Taurus. When it works right, that's what you see. Um, I feel like when you look out into the woods, when you look out into nature, and you're like just struck by how beautiful it is and it's awe-inspiring and it touches you in a different way, it's just like nothing else can be as beautiful as something like a sunset or a mountaintop or something like something beautiful like that. I feel like that is Taurus. That whole idea of, of being awestruck by the beauty of nature, by the beauty of just the way things have come together to create this one big thing. I feel like that's Taurus. That's the beauty that people see in Taurus. That's what makes them so attractive. The archetype itself is that is that idea. That beauty of things that have come together. Next is Gemini. I feel like Gemini, Gemini is mutable air. It's the first air sign. It's the only mutable air sign. I feel like it honestly and truly represents curiosity. I feel like curiosity is something we are born with. We're born with that influence. So with Gemini, I feel like it's, it's just honest curiosity. It's the curiosity of making things happen, what happens when this goes together, what happens when that goes together. Actually understanding what's going on around you and being able to have an idea of what life so far is. What, what has Aries and Taurus created so far? What do I make of myself? What do I make of the world around me now that I understand that I'm separate from it? Now that, I, now that there's an understanding that there's a me and then there's a you, what's the difference between us? That whole curiosity in itself, the, be, the ability to ask those questions, I feel like is Gemini, the archetype of what Gemini represents in someone's chart. And that ability to communicate your curiosity to others, asking questions. Next, I feel Cancer is the archetype of nurturing in general. Cancer makes it so things can grow. You need air, you need light, and you need water for a plant to grow, as well as the earth, of course, for a plant to grow. It needs certain things for it to be able to, to do what it needs to do to survive. I feel like cancer is that ability Cancer brings the nurturing. Cancer brings, I feel like the fourth house and a cancer's association to your mother is what you think of her. What that mother represents to you. The representation of your nurturing in life is cancer. That archetype itself is how things are nurtured, how things are given the ability to grow. I feel like cancer is the accumulation of things. Yet again, an accumulation, but it's an accumulation of spirit now something again in cardinal the second cardinal sign the first water sign something is being created with it being water it's existential it's it's further out it's it's a, it's a coming of cosmic beings it's a coming of things that humans and ourselves have not are not are just now being able to wrap our minds around existing. These things are now accumulating, and it's more than just particles, like with Taurus. It's, it's more than that. Things are accumulating that are setting in motion things that are not physical. They are a being, they are, they are manifested, but it's not something physically manifested. Then you have fire. The second fire sign the first, um, the second fire sign, the second fixed sign. There's a matchup there. 
something beautiful happens when these two cycles link up. Just like something beautiful happened when this first cycle linked up in Aries. With Leo, the archetype of Leo is drive. It's the real idea of what drive means to you. It's the idea of expressing your drive, expressing your fire, giving off warmth, not burning everything. Because Aries will burn everything. Aries is that ignition of the flame when a flame engulfs something. But the period between the fire engulfing something and when it's actually burnt out and there's nothing there, when that fire is just sitting, dying slowly, but still it's taking the resources from everywhere it can to keep itself alive, that's Leo. Leo needs what it needs to keep itself alive. Leo is the first sign, a first archetype of survival. Leos are dramatic about the things that they need. They know what they need. They come into this earth, someone with strong Leo come to this world knowing exactly what they need to survive. Maybe they want too much of it. Maybe they want the superficial version of it. But a Leo knows what they need. There are just certain things that will keep that flame alive. They cannot go with their flame going out. They have a certain drive as well. All fire has a drive. But Leo is the first one to put it on display, to ask for what it needs, and not, not just more than ask for it. A Leo will take it. A Leo will go out there and take what they need. They will go out there and go fucking get it. It's the idea of fire keeping, sustaining its own life, sustaining its own life for it. Now, there's a, there's a reason for you to be alive because you're sustaining yourself your reason to be alive is to fucking stay alive you know what i mean that's the archetype of leo then you move into virgo i personally feel that virgo is the start of life life as we know it life as animals life as trees life as i don't what else is there besides animals and trees Some things that have come into being things that are alive Things that we consider to be alive would be Virgo. I feel like Virgo represents the woods, the jungle, the savanna, the forest. Any type of, of collection of things that are alive is Virgo. Virgo took from Taurus the, the collection of molecules and created a system. Now there's a system to these molecules, and these systems have a drive from Leo, which is now behind it, have a drive to survive. These, now these systems have a purpose. Now we have plants that do what they need to do to survive. They ask for what they need for. They go out and get what they need. They're a living thing. They supplement their own existence. Virgo keeps putting together systems, perfecting them, perfecting them, perfecting them. Even if systems have changed, anything that's died out naturally has not been able to sustain itself. Whatever we can look around and consider alive to this day is still perfection. It's a system within systems. These things that Virgo create. Virgo is a mutable earth sign. It needs to look around and figure out where it needs to go and what it needs. And it's an earth sign, so it's going to accomplish its needs. In Taurus, it was just the creation of something. It was fixed. Its mind was already made up. I already knew this is what I was going to do when I came into existence. I was going to pull molecules together and have things exist. I was going to create a substance. Virgo is now creating a system for that substance. And the system has drive because of Leo. These systems have drive to survive. That is the archetype of Virgo, putting things together. You're so detail-oriented because you're dealing with molecules. You're dealing with systems of different um, living things, the system of the plants. A plant creates a, pl a flower. The wind takes some of the seeds. Other insects take some of the seeds. Other things eat those insects. There's a pecking order to our nature. Nature itself, these systems that create how nature survives, again, this need for something to maintain itself within a system is a mix of Virgo and Leo. It's that evolution, it's the cycle now making itself clear. Life as we know it did not exist 
until Virgo. Virgo made things physical. We can physically see, touch, and react with these things now. Libra. My honest opinion, Libra is the creation of humanity. Humans did not exist until Libra. Libra is the idea of navigating these systems, not upsetting the balance so we can all survive, but being able to make decisions so that you survive and the people that matter to you can survive as well. You care about other people. You care about other living things. The Libra is the combination of two separate sides balancing out, being able to decide what, what works and what doesn't, letting go of what doesn't work and going after what does work. It's cardinal air. It has to do something. Libra has to move. Libra has to create. Air is now in, this, in, in, in its position to create something. Libra... Really, I feel like Libra represents humans because if you look at us, we have two of everything. Everything is balanced out between two eyes, two ears, a left side of our brain, a right side of our brain, um, two feet, two hands. It's never, nothing's perfect. Libra does not look for perfection. Libra looks for balance. And our human bodies and our human brain have existed to this point. It is 2015 and all the humans that are still here are still here. So that balance physically is working. That balance that needed to be struck to create us came into being with the archetype of Libra. The fact that we're physically here and have a drive to do something comes from Virgo and Leo. If you ask me, and this is where I say things get a little taboo, if you ask me, religion itself is all about looking back where we came from, what we're here for, how do we exist with each other without dying out, what's the right way to live and what's the wrong way to live. Those seem to be the main things that come up to me when I hear about religion. You look back and you find nature, Virgo, because if we're starting from the point of humanity being Libra, you look back again from past our physical nature, what drives us to be, what drives us to have consciousness, I would say it's Leo. I feel like these things that people decide to worship outside of like major religions, because it seems like a little different, it's Leo. It's the sun. It's like the, like the, the Mayans, things of that nature. They worship different sides of nature, things that, that uphold nature uphold us. We are the products of the earth. Unless we were dropped off here by, by aliens, there's no difference between us and a plant when it comes down to where did we come from. We all stemmed from the same ground we walk on now. Nobody else on this earth came from anywhere else but the earth until we find out who's, who are aliens and who are not. So when you look back to what gives earth, earthly beings the life on earth, Virgo, what gives it drive, why are we here, survival, that would be Leo. And really the, the only being that, that gets to the point of understanding that and working with that fact is Aquarius. After Libra, because I digress, <laughs> after Libra, you get Scorpio. Scorpio, I feel, the, the, es the esoteric like uh, archetype of Scorpio is the reveal of death. I feel like Scorpio is the sign, the archetype that sees an end coming. They see through everything. They see the future, they see the past, they see where they are and they can look around and understand what's going on. It's like Libra is innocence and Scorpio was when that innocence is taken. You now understand things you really wish you didn't now understand, but it's too late, you get it. They, they represent symbols and secrets because sometimes people do not need to know everything. Sometimes people cannot handle everything and if you're a person who's not well balanced with between your oppositions and, and you're just within yourself you're not ready to take on the truth that is this world you won't be able to handle it and when scorpio came into being the ninth through the 12th house did not happen yet but scorpio saw the 12th house coming 
So now things needed to be hidden until they could be deciphered later by someone who could handle it. Next would be Sagittarius. Sagittarius are born, just like every sign, is born with the knowledge of the signs before it. Sagittarius is born with the freshest memory in its head being, I'm going to die. This life is not promised to me. It is the last sign born of fire. It's mutable fire. It is the first time that fire just enjoys being a flame. Until it dies out, it knows the end is coming. I cannot sustain this for any longer. So I'm going to go out with a fucking bang. That's why Sagittarius do not have time. Sagittarius is the only sign that legit, I don't got time for any of your bullshit. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. I don't got time for it to be what it ain't. I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on. And I'm going to laugh about it because it's not that serious to me. The things that are serious to me are the things I want to accomplish before I die. The things that are serious to me are being the best at what I can be the best at until I die. Fire came and it swept and it left. It was the last hurrah of fire. That idea of my life is going to end, so I need to do what I can now before it ends. Now that life that you just talked about is over. That archetype has ended. And you're left with Capricorn, the sign that has to pick up the pieces. The earth is now exalting itself. Fire just exalted itself. Now it's Earth's turn. Capricorn has learned to pick up the pieces, get things together, and deal with what needs to be dealt with. Everything around you has been massacred by Sagittarius, because really if you let a whole bunch of Sagittarius free, you're going to have ruins by the end, because they're not looking back. They're doing what they need to do in, in, in their minds. That's the best idea. That's the best thing to do. Capricorn is the one that is left dealing with what they just left everywhere. The mess that they just left behind them. Capricorn has to make the best of that. Because it's still an earth sign. It has to move. It has to get these things done. What you see is all there is. Is a phrase that, that is associated to Capricorn. I feel that Capricorn represents hell. In its opposition, cancer represents heaven. Because their archetypes represent the idea of what heaven and hell represent. Heaven is supposed to be a place where everyone's gathered, no one has any worries, it's all nurturing and love. You're in a space where everything is everything, everyone's on an even playing field, and you get to just exist without pain, without fear, without anything that can hold you down anything that that hurt you while you were human while you were alive you're going back to a, a state so primitive that you're not alive anymore but you still exist that cancer of things accumulating and things happening outside of physical being cardinal water so when you hit cardinal earth all you're left with is pain all you're left with is responsibility and struggle and work I feel like that's really what hell is. You're dealing with the burdens. You're dealing with the regrets. You're dealing with all these things. You cannot run from pain anymore once you enter hell. You cannot run from anything. You must deal with it. You have to. There is no choice. I feel like that's what the archetype of Capricorn represents. Because you are Earth. You are the exaltation of Taurus, the accumulation of molecules. Virgo the production of these molecules, the systems of these molecules and what they produce, and you exalt the two. Things that humans can now do. Humans created their own systems. That's why things are going extinct and we feel like we're ruining the earth that we live on because we grew to the point that we created systems technically unnatural. We are the pinnacle peak. We are dealing with the top of what Earth can do. It can create systems on top of systems on top of systems that are now physically being dealt with, even though they're physically not there. We're pulling these things together and making them. We're treating people as molecules and creating a mass of something and then creating a system within this mass and the system is flourishing. That's business, that's um, home ownership, that's all the systems that we work through, healthcare. Um, any system you can think of that we thrive off of. Capricorn represents 
that archetype of people being the ability of that coming into existence. How we did that, the first time we ever did it, would be Capricorn. That, that archetype is now being accessed. The enjoyment of what has just come to be in Capricorn is Aquarius. Aquarius comes with confidence. Aquarius comes with knowledge and Aquarius comes with the innate ability to deal with responsibility coolly and calmly. Just imagine a president, the way that a president just knows, don't cuss, don't be a jerk, kiss the baby, shake the hands. And if you're, if they're a good, um, if they're a good actor, or I'm not sure how to really uh, represent it, if they're really good at what they do, if a, if a president's really good at what they do, they're going to make it look natural. They're just going to follow the rules without it being so visible that they're following the rules. It looks like they're just being themselves. Even though if they were being themselves, they would probably be a, ho a whole lot more loose. They would cuss a whole lot more. Their ideas would be a whole lot more taboo. Their personal opinions would leak in a whole lot more than if they were in an interview or if they were at a press conference. The way that a president handles that and makes it look natural is that representation of Aquarius. Aquarius just comes into being knowing how to deal with pain, knowing how to deal with all these problems. It's the exaltation of air. Air has now come to a point where it's asked enough questions, it's created its own being, it, it sees what it's capable of, and now it's putting those two things together. And it's, and it's creating things outside of itself just like Capricorn did. Capricorn started something new with it being cardinal. It was the last hurrah of a cardinal sign. And, um, and Aquarius is the last hurrah of this fixed sign. Now Aquarius is taking the air, that air that it's born into, and it's watching these systems make themselves. It's outside of the system, Aquarius. They are born outside of this system. They understand it from the outside because really they're coming with the idea that they helped create it. They're coming with the idea that I'm from the background. I'm the one that was walking around um, helping all these things come into being. I am broadcasting. I am this communication, mass communication, because I understand what it takes for all these systems outside of nature to exist. And they, they come with the confidence from being the opposite of Leo. Leo has now grown up. Aquarius understands your needs and understands how to ask for your needs. They understand that they're their own person and everybody's their own person. That's why they're so unique. That's why they're so driven. And, and that's why they're so, with a fixed energy, that's why they're so stubborn because they know what their ideas are. They have come here with knowing exactly what their needs are and how to meet them and how to meet other ne people's needs as well. But another taboo thing that I've come to understand myself in astrology is that Aquarius, to me, represents another hand of God. I feel like Aquarius can easily represent God just as well as Leo can, depending on what type of religion you're in and what are you looking for and, and what, you, what you decide is God. When... When Aquarius is put in that position, when Aquarius is now that one point, that space after heaven and hell, you went through heaven and cancer, you just made it out of hell and Capricorn, and now you feel like you're in control, that's why you find cult leaders. Some religions, not all religions, are just come from the sky, just come from nowhere. Some religions come from people who made them up. People who wrote these things down and decided it was the truth. Out there, there are some religions that are do that. I'm not naming any names or what I decide what religions are what. There are some. We have too many religions out there, too many ways of life out there for them, for this not to be true. Some of these religions are made from people who created them. Those people who come with that innate ability to create a religion, create something that everyone will follow, something they understand how to create a system that'll feed itself well after they're gone, is Aquarius. Aquarius can be God. And Aquarius sure as hell can be the devil. The Antichrist, if you look up his chart, do you see how much Aquarius he has in his chart? If you even believe in something like that. It's that ability to manipulate everything behind you. The only thing that's left is 
Pisces. Pisces is the only one left out of the control that Aquarius can take over someone. It's not that they want to at all. It's just that they are born with the ability to, and they are born with the knowledge that they can do it. Because there's no lack of pride, there's no lack of confidence. They come from Leo. So I'm a little wary of Aquarius. I'm so not gonna lie. <laughs> like Aquarius make me nervous. And I have like five planets in Leo anyway, so I just automatically am a little edgy with them. But it's just, there's, there's definitely, there's so much potential there that it's scary when it comes to Aquarius. They can do so much good and they can do so much horrible evil when you look at what, they're, what that archetype represents. And that's the changeability of systems. They're fixed, they're strong enough to come in and change a whole system. Change what everybody thinks on a mass scale. Lastly, you have Pisces. Technically, I don't really think Pisces is the last. Um, I feel like there is no beginning or an end. It's a circle. You can't say, if, is there a beginning of, or an end to a circle? But um, there's a point that people choose to start from. And the one that makes the most sense would be Aries, but there, there's no beginning. I feel like the knowledge that Aquarius comes with, if they're balanced, and they're, and they're dealing with things outside of things of a physical nature, that these systems and, and things that pow, like power, you get Aquarius who can decipher what Scorpio left for them. These symbols and signs, Aquarius will decipher them. And the knowledge from, the, the knowledge from Scorpio, Pisces is created. Pisces is all knowledge. Pisces knows. They just know they're born with every sign behind them. There's nowhere else to go after Pisces unless you want to go to Aries and start this circle again. Or unless you want to go backwards and hit Aquarius. There's nowhere else to go. Pisces is the idea of religion. It's that escape that everyone can get to. That idea of survival, being able to flourish and continue or die is Pisces. It's, it's existential knowledge. Finally, existential knowledge has been reached. And once you've gotten to that place of existential knowledge, you know the unknowable, you know this, you know that, you know what makes the world work. You know what makes the universe the universe. The only thing left to do in a situation of that much power is to create. That's why Pisces are the artist. That's why Pisces are the ones who just interpret everything around them. They soak up what's around them and then they produce something out of it. They cannot help but just replicate the collage of emotions and instincts and things that come before them and things surrounding them and create something new. Pisces creates Aries. That space between Pisces and Aries is creation itself. The, the heavens above and what is now to come. Pisces creates Aries. And Aries, in turn, creates Pisces. Because Aries has to find out where it came from. And it goes all the way around back to Aries again. There's a cycle. That's the cycle of the archetypes. To create. Stay alive long enough to create again. And, and just go through that cycle. And qualities are mixed in elements are mixed in and things start to make themselves known within humanity because now we're the ones from the seventh sign from Libra we're right in the middle we're right in the middle of all of it and now we're we can interpret what's behind us and what's ahead of us we can interpret um what what has come to be and what can be seen for the for our future we have a control over that with that balance between Aries and Libra. Humanity itself, I feel like, comes from that balance. This idea, to me, is the cycle of the archetypes. I have a way of interpreting it into Earth itself, with Leo being the core of our Earth, and um, everything beyond Leo being Earth now as we know it. The science of Earth can be explained from the core Leo to all the way out to Pisces, space, what we float around and the creation of Earth itself, everything leading up to that core in the middle, would be Aries to Cancer. 
Um, I have different ways of, of explaining all types of things. I can explain human nature with this. I can explain religion with this. I can explain all types of things with this. So it's definitely something that I feel like works. It works for me. So I definitely want to get it out to the world so other people can understand it. And, um, and, and tell me what you agree with. What, what things do you see? What problems do you see with it? Let me know because this is something that I, I take seriously and I want to know where I can go wrong or where I can improve this. And I want to know what other people think about it. Um... Yeah, this is a really long video. It's going to take really long to edit. But um, thanks for watching. If you watched it this far, I thank you. So subscribe. Uh, look forward to more videos. Thanks for watching.